So between the two of them, who would you say is the better team of managers? Oh, okay. I, I think I'm just going to walk away now. Or I might get fired. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joel. And hi, I'm Henry. And we are the co-founders of Shopback. And today we want to show you what's a typical day in our lives. My day starts at 8. Recently started doing cold showers to freshen up the day. Start almost straight away, uh, doing breakfast. A lot of meetings, look forward to lunch and, and dinner where there's a chance to catch up with either colleagues or with family. I think COVID really made it very easy to connect with people virtually. So actually spending a lot of time talking to a lot of overseas colleagues. Uh, to plan and to strategize uh, on, on the road ahead. Typically end the day at close to midnight, uh, try to spend the last half an hour not doing anything um, before I go to bed. For me, I, my, my kid wakes me up at about 7.30 every, every day. So uh, it comes, comes over, uh, talks to me, normally in office by about 9. Uh, and then I think that's where the day starts. Unlike Henry, I, I need my breakfast. So I'll go and get uh, breakfast and, and afterwards, um, it'll be meetings and then lunch. Uh, sometimes on the go, sometimes uh, in between meetings. The day normally ends uh, towards uh, 8 or 9. Um, trying to institute an evening walk every day, but um, that, that's uh, something I'm trying to challenge myself to do. Welcome to the Shopback campus. Uh, we just moved into our new office, so everything is almost brand new. So let me give you a tour. Let's go. So here's the library. Every time you finish reading a book, it lies fellow somewhere. So I, I think they had this concept of having a shop back library. This is actually an accumulation of all the books over the years that as people have read, finished reading it, liked the book and, and placed it here. And others are, will have the opportunity to read these books. Very passionate individuals. Determined. They were always very hands-on in project delivery or um, any sort of thing related to shop back. People at shop back have a winning mindset la, and never at the expense of people's growth, people's uh, mental well-being. You can see in Joel and Henry, in the way that they carry themselves, it is very clear that they have a precise outcome that they want to achieve and that is to win and they stop at nothing to get there. As long as it's your business and your baby, you, you have this obsession to, to really try to make it like, like better. Actually more than just the founders, right? I think we also look out for a lot of team members who are uh, equally obsessed. And, and actually what we do uh, to make sure everyone is also aligned is that we make everyone owners. So everyone in Shopback has stock options and, and everyone is an owner in their company. Then because you are also owner in a company, as the company grows, you, you also gain. Then we, we want to find people who are equally obsessed to make Shopback better for users, merchants, as well as for, for us as a, as, a, as a company. This one is pretty interesting. It has followed us since almost the start. We had uh, a team member that was a shifting house. After she shifted the house, she didn't know where to put this piano. So she placed it in the office. Since then, we have moved office multiple times. Every time we move office, this has uh, come along with us. Every time we come up with a product, we should be able to say that uh, this was helpful for some, S, U, and M. We should always try to think of it from three lenses, which is short back users and merchants. And these are three people that make Shopback possible. So one is Shopback, which is our own Shopbackers and, and Shopback as a business. You know, if we do this, is it even viable? Because if it's not viable at all, then our users will not benefit anything from that. Our goal is always to help users in, in their shopping journey. And then our merchants, which is people that, uh, because we have this user base, they, they want to partner with us so that we're able to value add to the users. And we also must be able to value add to them, helping them get more sales, more users. They always highlight on like, oh, if there's any feedback, like, please give us feedback. Yeah, because I remember one thing that Henry said to me is, you know, if feedback, right, you give me compliments, right, I won't improve. But if you give me like things that I can improve on, then I can get better. Every time you add the element of a suggestion, that makes, I, I think, the person giving feedback uh, think more. That helps to put uh, both parties on the same page when we are trying to solve problems or to improve things. We are the most rewarding way for people to shop. Today, we help people to earn rewards uh, via cashback. We help them to discover great deals. We also help them to compare across thousands of retailers, uh, both online and in-store. I think we never once thought that we could expand beyond Singapore at the start. Then we went on to Southeast Asia, we went to Taiwan, we went to Australia. Then we went about this second wave of reinvention. We try to do more than just uh, online cashback. Started to introduce vouchers, started to introduce product comparison. So we're constantly reinventing ourselves and I think that journey of iteration and, and growth is, is very interesting and, and for me it's very uplifting. I think Henry and Joel are both very competitive for sure. Fun. Very fun loving. I think the one thing that really stuck with me is how intense 
competitions are here over the ping pong table. There was once like we were in our old office, then uh, I think Joel was playing table tennis with like another fellow shop backer. Then halfway through suddenly like Henry exited from one of the meeting rooms and was like, hey, Joel, what time already? Now he's now he's got meeting eh. Then he was like, hey, wait, 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 one more, one more, one more. There are also some, I think, ex-national players in the, the office that they are always challenging. And even if they are always like eating eggs, they are always still trying to challenge them. So it's quite nice to see their non-giving up spirit. Oh, okay. I, I think I'm just gonna walk away now. I might get fired. <laughs> They're both equally bad. <laughs> if that answers your question. If you asked us five years ago um, where we will be today, we would never have guessed it. That time, I think we were in Singapore, Malaysia, and we have about a team of 100. You told us that we will be I don't know, 50 times bigger than then. Uh, we have 700 people, we have in nine markets. I would never believe you, and Joel wouldn't do that. I think if we had to plan, we could have. So I, I hope that you know, in five years from now, or uh, ten years from now, we still are very focused on, on making shopping rewarding, but in a way that we cannot uh, once imagine. Every year is a year of challenge, but also a year of opportunities. Uh, we see a lot of possibilities moving ahead. I think this business model can be brought to other markets, and we think that you know we can plot the shop back flex in more places. I would say that a good leader would be someone that would be able to make uh, unpopular decisions or, or be able to say no sometimes uh, if it does not uh, uh, benefit the team or, or the company in the long run. I guess we fail almost every day. The question is to what degree, right? So sometimes failures are just telling you that this experiment or this strategy have is not working. And how do you cost correct? I think a year and a half ago, we had a security incident. It's a big failure, I think, on the company's part. It was also the time where we saw the company come together to be responsible to our users, merchants, and team members alike. Shopback works in a really, really speedy manner. I think we make decisions like that. Sometimes uh, pretty stressful, but in a very, very good way because it pushes you to, I guess, be a better version of yourself all the time. You have a lot of like autonomy to do what you want. If you have a plan, uh, you have a project in mind, and then you think that it will work out, like they'll let you try it out also. Lah. Whatever startup you want to do, like, like try it. Uh, one thing that can help you would be to look at your idea and see who else in this world has done this idea before. And, and that gives you both a crystal ball to see you know, how this business will pan out. When you look at them, they likely are a product of all the mistakes and all the changes that they made. There are two risks. There's the idea risk, which if they are doing well there, that sort of el eliminates the idea risk. Then the second one is execution. And your goal is to make sure that uh, the idea risk is taken care of and then you really just focus on the execution. And there you have it, that's how we got to be employee number one. <laughs>